Now, th there are a lot of people that do what they call qualitative research that have found what you've found talking to young people, that the issue that people are so hot about, people under 40, is home ownership, the rental crisis, and they need to hear politicians talking about it. They do. And I've heard many people, including my parents, who, when I saw them pay their first uh, mortgage repayments, the interest rates were at 16, 17 per cent for a while. But we know that when you compare average wages with median house prices, it has never been harder than it is now. And I'm really worried that success in life will become less about hard work and more about the lottery of birth or, or even marrying well. And, and, and I don't think that's the Australia that we've prided ourselves on or the Australia we want to leave to our children and grandchildren. And you and some of the young people in New South Wales have spoken to Chris Rath, who's in his 30s, uh, who's uh, in the New South Wales Upper House, are saying that uh, if you want to get the votes of young people who are now being attracted by the Greens in particular and others, you've got to start talking about housing. Well, you do, and, and we should be driven by what's right for our nation and our, our electorates, uh, but I think there is also a political dividend for this, and it's simple maths. At the last census, we know that those born between 1981 and 1996, known as millennials, they are now our largest generation, and they do feel locked out. They feel that they're not being heard about how difficult it is to buy your first home. So, of course, there would be a political dividend if we get that right. Yeah, and so you've looked at, you've looked at the demographics yourself on, on the potential there to win back some of these seats, but you've got to be talking about it on a regular basis. I'm sure you do that in, in your own area. We do, but, but we've got to have the solutions as well. And it's no surprise that the cost of land and the supply of quality housing is, is a key factor. And when you look at the cost of land as you get closer to a city, like in Melbourne where I am or in, in Sydney, it's just prohibitively expensive. And there is a serious disconnect between the prices and average wages uh, where even people on quite high professional wages or a couple just feel like that they cannot buy a home in Sydney and it's getting that way in Melbourne as well. And, and I have seen many people, young, young professionals who have left Sydney to come and live in Melbourne and we've seen others who have left Melbourne to go and live elsewhere in Australia. And, uh, and that means that there's something wrong in the way that we're providing quality, affordable stock for people to buy. So there's a few issues, isn't there? There's the supply issue, there's this ongoing question about immigration Melbourne, I think, now is the, the biggest city in the country. Uh, so the, the, the constant growth in the population that, that, that's got to be feeding into all of this. That, that is a, an immediate factor that, that matters now. And, you know, you don't have to be a big or small Australia person. You just have to say that immigration should be proportionate. It should be proportionate to our capacity to have housing stock there for people, for schools and hospitals and green spaces to be preserved. If it's proportionate, then the social licence for a generous immigration system will always be there. But it feels like it's out of whack right now. And, and those numbers in the last 12 months uh, just don't add up. And it's putting extra pressure on the market when we least need it. Do you recognise as well that you've got the Greens who, who make a lot of noise about housing and some of the policies don't stack up, but young people, are, from what I can see, are drawn to it because they're hearing them talk about it? No doubt that that is a factor, and, and, and their housing spokesperson is a very effective politician. I, yeah. you know, I, I think those on my side would love to have his social media influence that he has, but it's because he is speaking about the issue that that matters most. Uh, but, but that's a challenge that we have to meet. But our solutions are, are actually ones that I think can move the dial. Uh, having the government build the stock and own the house is not the answer. Uh, the answer is to increase supply, but not just supply that sees. Uh, build to rent high rises that you can't raise a family in, but a focus on private ownership where people own their first home and that sort of medium density stock that a young person can say, well, this is a place where I can raise a family and I can have a few kids. Mm. It's got two or three bedrooms. Um, that's the sort of stock we have to look for. And if we can incentivize that, then I think we're on the right track. OK, all right. So you, there's quite a few of you. I mean, is it, is, is, it, is it younger MPs largely who are really starting to drive this or is it more across the, the broader party? I hope it's across the broader party. Yeah, I'm finding that I'm getting people who are at retirement age or middle age who are telling me, whether I knock on doors or call them, uh, you know, in phone canvassing, 
that they're worried about this, not because of selfish reasons, but because of the kind of Australia that we're leaving for our children. It's becoming a dinner table conversation in the same way that other issues were a few years ago. And, and I think that goes to the generosity of spirit in Australians, that we don't just vote for people based on what we can get out of it. We vote for their capacity to actually solve the problems that people care about. And this is a top-tier issue right now. OK. All right, Keith Wallahan, I hope we'll have more conversations. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John.